Hey, forgot to turn my microphone on. Hey, it's me, Critzy. Welcome <clears throat> back to Sorcery. Uh, last time I, I had I had to end my recording session earlier, so I, I don't know what was going on immediately. Uh, we went to a big statue. Uh, okay, uh, the, the massive statue, length of three carts joined end to end, and the face is as lone as as tall as you are. Okay. Pray? Like to my spirit, or... Pause to raise a prayer to the gorilla and feel a great presence. You turn to see a figure appearing from the trees. It's a woman. She looks familiar from somewhere, but she is waddling. Now, hang on. If I if I choose to move on, can I uh, still see this without wasting my prayer? Look east. Look south. Look figure. And move on. Nope. I do have to pray in order to get this divine presence. <clears throat> Look east, south, statue, pray. Okay, you turn to see a figure. It's a... Uh, you cannot place it. She's waddling. Greet her. The woman looks at you in surprise and flushes a smile. One hand goes to cover her belly, and you realize she's pregnant. She stops and reaches out one hand to the statue's head to support herself. Wait for her to regain her breath. <laughs> <clears throat> then finally she straightens up. Well, she declares, I'll be glad when this one's... Okay, I'll be glad when this one's doing its own walking around, she pats her belly. Are you a stranger here? I don't recognize you. I am a traveler. You'll be heading for the bridge to Tinpang in Ilkala, then, she says. A piece of advice, don't try to double-cross the toll keeper. He's tougher than he looks. Okay. Ask her about the statue. <clears throat> Who is this god? You ask, indicating the statue. You're not from around here, then, I suppose. Help me down. You offer your arm, and she lowers herself into a sitting position. That's Ka Kaoth. Kaoth. God of peace. I'm not a follower, but I've been finding his company soothing. That's not a woman? Okay. Fine. Sure. Now I find his company soothing. The past few words are somewhat pointed. He is asleep? No, he's dead. <laughs> she arranged herself cross legged truly at peace. The story goes he went into the wilderness to spend 30 days without food or water and dropped dead in a week. Okay, well, yeah, I guess he is at peace. Sure. Join her. May I join you? You sit down beside her. If you like, she shrugs. Then she closes her eyes and begins to sing. A great stillness enters your body, and after a moment you cannot seem to move. Just wait. Just chill. You wait patiently to see what will occur. Your eyes are still open. The face of Ka'oth looms large, still as stone. Just wait. You continue to wait. Surely whatever magic is at, uh, is at work here cannot last too long. Kaoth's eyes bore into yours, daring you to blink, just for a moment. So, sure, sleep. Sure. Just let, just let it happen. Just roll with it, dude. <clears throat> your eyelids begin to fall. You feel a great peace flowing up inside of your body, stilling your heart, blocking your throat, closing your nostrils. You begin to feel very dizzy, and then the lips of, a, of the great reclining god crack open. This is not your place to die, it intones. Your death is planned elsewhere. Where? You are the Analander, Kaoth replies. And you are to die on the island of the Serpent of Time, surrounded by cold water and colder stone. How do you know this? I see all death, Kaoth replies, and I see you seek the Archmage. He is your goal. I intend to recover the crown no more. You will only take it from his lifeless brow, Kaoth assures you. Then know this, not all pasts are the same, and pasts may change. You sit now beside a woman who carries a child, and that child will become the Archmage you seek. Kill her now, and your mission ends. His voice is cold as stone and seems to echo around the plain, but the woman does not react. I can't do it. 
because she is innocent? How many innocents will her child take? Ooh, ooh, big questions. I go to recover the crown, no more. I will only kill when I must. <laughs> I killed that snake guy. <coughs> then you choose the path of willful ignorance. Very well. Kaoth seems to sigh. Only the idiot never worries about his own idiocy. Continue your quest, but you will always wonder what it might have been, what might have been. Abruptly, the woman's song stops. The statue is still once more, and you open your eyes. You fell asleep, she remarks, using your shoulders to stand. But I'll wager you feel better for it. Less than you might think. Woman shrugs. That's cow. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> <clears throat> With that, she puffs and huffs away down the path at an impressive speed and is lost to the mists. Look at the carved god. You sneak a glance at the god. He is not moved from whence you first saw him. His lips are still just slightly pursed as though snoring. No doubt his words on you were merely a dream. This land seems fresh and so alive. It's hard to believe that the desolate plain will become harder still to know. There is nothing left that can be done to prevent it. Huh? Oh, okay. What, are they all in the lake? Was that just where serpents go to chill? I thought... Huh? No, I thought... Wasn't there one in the woods? Alright, that's just where serpents go, I guess. We're in the serpent zone. Whatever. Let's uh, go visit that little village. You make your way back through the winding trees. This is not a path, but a wide, grassy avenue between fields to the south and thick trees to the north. The path to the lying statue leads north from here. Look into the trees! This is a thick stand of trees, but a narrow, winding path leads north from here. It appears well-trodden. Although the path into the trees... No, 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 I already went there. Stop. <clears throat> Look into the trees just to get some good gorilla points. Gorilla likes when I look at things. Okay, so... I'm going to want to go east to village. <clears throat> you walk on across a prairie until you meet the edge of an old road. Darkness closes in. You should find a suitable spot to sleep, especially after traveling a day without food. Nay... I'm fine. Also, what do you mean a day without food? I've definitely eaten food. The path winds up through low foothills towards an open area in the mountains. As you approach the foothills, you see a wooden palisade, spiked trunks planted to form a fence without a single with a single gate. From beyond comes the sound of a crackling bonfire and merry music. This must be the village the shepherd mentioned. Look at that village. It seems to be a bustling, busy place. Presumably, this village owns the fields and the farmland through which you have been walking. You could go in it or skirt around it. What a huge village! What a vast and impressively sized village! <clears throat> Are you sure this isn't just a trading post? You pause on the other side of the gate, one hand on your sword hilt, as should anyone be foolish enough to spring a trap, but... Nothing untoward, nothing untoward occurs. Okay. Look about. The village is a small collection of wooden huts built into a basin in the mountainside as it, at its back. The center is a roaring fire surrounded by tables and benches. A few people sit here drinking and talking in quiet voices. Chill. The cloth cover of a large hut snaps in the wind, and in a mere moment you've seen lines of mattresses. The moon slowly moves across the sky like a lidless eye. Leave? I can't just, like, explore the house? Itchy. A little bit itchy. Huh. The fire? Leave south? Sleep? Now nah, let's go hang by the fire, man. <clears throat> that fire seems a little big for all these uh, thatch houses. The fire pit is in the center of the village. You walk past low huts, and a few figures glance at you, but they show little interest. 
The fire is built high and hot. Smoke swirls up to obscure the stars. A few people surround it, watching and talking. Introduce myself? Oh yeah, cook some food. Yes. Munch. Yes. Uh, oh, <clears throat> you unwrap portions of raw meat and fish you have been carrying and roast them in the fire. The smell makes your empty belly groan and grumble. You tear into the hunks of meat. It's rich and delicious and highly nourishing. Someone passes around a charred joint of meat, offering you a bite. Sure, more. Eat more food. Mmm. Okay, pass it on. Having taken your share, you pass the joint on to the next person and introduce myself. Greetings, you declare to the gathered people. They look at you with some curiosity. Um, I'm a visitor here. So we see, a woman replies. And a few others laugh. They seem to lose interest in you and return to staring at the fire and talking to each other. Maybe I should have said I'm from Annaland. Alright, yeah, sure. I'm going to go back. I'm going to say I'm from Annaland. Time warp. Yep. Uh, I cook my food. Okay. Eat. Pass it on. I already ate. I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Introduce myself. Say I'm, I'm from Annaland. <clears throat> a lounging woman lifts a hand in return. Welcome to Kariyama, she replies. Be well. Boy, okay, and then they just don't care. All right, talk to someone. Sit down beside the woman who spoke earlier. She nods in acknowledgement but says nothing. This is a beautiful village. The woman smiles and then pauses to tighten a bootlace, a movement which casually flashes a marriage band on her wrist. Thank you, stranger. We are all we all welcome you. This village is Kariyama, the most beautiful village in Ishtara. Okay. You probably don't know about the backlands, so I'm going to ask, uh, how can I get across the ridge? You're so eager to leave already. There is a bridge. You'll have to pay the bridge keeper a toll, of course, and he rarely asks too much. What's the toll? She looks surprised by the question. Whatever you have, obviously. You can't take a hole from what you don't carry. Is there another way? The woman looks briefly uncomfortable. I've heard it said there are tunnels, but they were all blocked up because of the pests. What pests? Invisible creatures. They came into the night and stole our goats. You talk a lot. Is that normal where you're from? I rarely see people. <laughs> you travel alone? I understood this land was empty. <laughs> Shtara is the center of the world. We all we will survive forever. Hope so, you reply, thinking the empty wastes are already seen. <clears throat> what can you tell me of the backlands? Of the backlands? Um, you've not heard of them? Are they beyond the Zanzunu Peaks? I know nothing of what lies back there. These are the backlands here. She laughs. This is a Shtara. I am quite sure. Feel the soft wind on your face? Is it not good? Seems wherever you are, this place is far removed from Kakabad, at least for the people. Uh, you nod to the woman and get to your feet once more. Stranger, one of the villagers declares, we have a we are having a discussion. Who would be the most likely to best the other in a fight, a goblin or a wolf? I have seen such a fight. You have, they declare with pleasure. And who was the strongest in the battle? The wolf, no doubt. Ah, goblin is cunning and sword-wise, another declares. No wolf is a match for a blade. I believe the wolves win? I did not stay to find out. I believe the wolves won in the end. Ah, right, from the gates. <clears throat> Remembering the baying howls on your back when you left the north gate of Kare. We will ask the archmage to deliver one of each, decides a villager with a sigh. In the name of learning and scholarship... I've heard rumor of tunnels. Tunnels, one replies, looking a bit uncomfortable. There are tunnels, another replies, but we do not go there. Can can I fix this problem? Why not? Because there's no need, and they are some dangers. What dangers? Something lives there. There is no danger here in Kariyama. The Archmage keeps us quite safe, but under the mountain, well... Ah, they say magic doesn't work under the mountain. How can I find them? Simply enough. Head through the north gate. Enough questions, another villager says. Please, don't go to the tunnel. We have no wish to send you to your doom. Okay. 
All right. I'm, I'm going to the tunnels. <laughs> Ain't no way I'm not going to the tunnels. Ooh, wait. Is there uh, more stuff that I want to explore before I go tunneling? Uh, let's see. Uh, I did kind of want to check out what that is. Uh, shucks. But I don't want to walk all the way back here. All right. I was hoping there would be a market or something here so I could get my thingamajig back. Uh, maybe it would have to go at daytime or something. <clears throat> you approach the tunnel mouth and lift away the covering of vines. The passage descends dank and dark into the bowels of the mountain beyond. Uh, fire of danger. Nah, go inside. The mountains overhead create an imposing sight. You walk in and through an ancient tomb. Even the air smells musty and old, but there's a breeze on your hand. Does that mean there's a way through? Presumably, because, you know, air doesn't really move in caves. You make your way slowly through the narrow entrance and into the cool dark of the tunnel. Or at least I think so. I've never actually been in a cave. You hold out your hand to feel your way forward. Cast a spell! Uh, you raise your hand, but it seems deep below the mountains the presence of starlight cannot reach you. You are powerless. Look at the tunnel walls. You try to make out something in the tunnel walls, but the darkness is absolute. Move forward. I couldn't, like, cast my light spell back there. Uh, you stumble, stumble onwards. Oh, jeez. You know what? Hang on. All right, if we're... Not letting me cast a spell. Might as well light a light. <clears throat> your tinderbox provides a spark. You look through your patch to uh, catch something on fire. Fl scroll? Spell book? Ah, oh, fuck. I don't have any torches. God dang it. Ugh. Alright, whatever. Dark time. Sure, I've, I've walked through the dark before. Can't cast a spell. Look at the walls. Yep, darkness is absolute. Make a move. Can't imagine what I'm missing in here. You stumble onward, squinting in the gloom. The tunnel winds a steady course with occasional branches that lead into dead ends. It becomes clear this is not a natural cavern. Wooden pillars line the walls, creaking under the weight of stone. Cast a spell! Uh, of course. Test the pillars. Test one of the pillars for, for strength. Applying a little pressure responds with a crunching, cracking sound and dust rains down in a spill. Okay, well, don't, don't push the pillars. Being careful not to lean on, a, on the pillar, you keep one hand to the wall to your left and use it to guide you. Then your foot strikes something hard, not a rock, the length of um, length of metal, perhaps. Reach down for it. <clears throat> Feel the object, a long metal spike with a wooden pole in its center. A pickaxe! Someone's been mining down here. All right. I want a, I want a pickaxe. A few steps further, you collide into a wooden wall that reaches from knee height to knee neck height. Okay. It appears to be on wheels. A mine cart, then. Feel inside? Uh, hoping to find some treasure or valuable metal, but it's empty. Not even a discarded rock. Yeah, let's not go on the cart. This ain't Donkey Kong. You make your way through the dark, and soon your hand feels nothing but air. A side passage. Hello, I'm here to... Pray for protection? For why? For what? It's just darkness. I'm not afraid of darkness. Toss a small pebble down it, and the echo must be quite sm <clears throat> tells you it must be quite small. As your eyes adjust, you notice something dimly glowing at the end. Yeah, move towards it. Footsteps muffled by thick sand. I shuffle towards the glowing object. You trip over more abandoned and broken tools, and then you are close enough to see a curved golden object poking out from the rubble. This is the source of the light, and it seems to be pulsing softly. Beside the rubble are two large shapes that look like jars. Move closer. <clears throat> you edge round the jars to get a closer look at the artifact. It's a horn! 
The dim glow makes the rest of the cavern dark, and you trip and stumble as you approach. Whatever it is, it's clearly infused with magic, and must be quite valuable, but it seems to have only been halfway freed from the rock. The wall feels smoother in places, like you have been feeling a built wall instead of a tunnel. The ground here also feels different. Look at the ground. You kick the ground and slowly realize it's been turned from rock into a layer of sand. The soft green light on your skin makes you look ill. Okay. Gather some sand. Yeah, yeah, I want some sand. Yeah, give me some sand. I love sand. Check to see if the tunnel's safe. Feeling around yourself, you can tell this passage is much shorter than the rest of the tunnel. The regular bumps in the wall that make up the support pillars are still here. You touch one and it's nearly bent in half. Shove it back into place. You set your shoulder against the pillar and push hard. It gives away like paper, and you tumble to the ground and it breaks in half. As you dust yourself off, a rock bounces off your head. You look up only to dodge out of the way. Oh, no. Another the size of a goblin crashes down. Dang it. You dodge the falling rocks as you race down the passage. As you get to the main tunnel, you can see it's unstable, too. Shit. Squeeze against the wall. You wince as the ceiling crashes down. No, I need the magic horn. I shouldn't have pushed that pillar, dummy. Uh, get a closer look at the artifact. Yep. Can't get a closer look at the rocks. Look at the ground. Grab some sand. Yeah. Why is there still crickets down here? Uh, you probably can't even hear it because it's so quiet. Check the tunnel if it's safe. Yep. Leave it alone. Okay. Not even a message for that one. Grab the horn. It's firmly stuck. Yank it. You haul a little harder and it comes free suddenly, sending you sprawling back against the horn uh, floor. Look at the horn. You waste no time in examining the horn. It's hard to see any details as the glow blinds you in the darkness, but you do make out some blocky script into a language you don't recognize. The horn is also slightly warm to the touch. Probably don't blow it in the tunnels. You're about to stand when you notice the nearest clay jar wobbling. It rocks back and forth faster. Then the lid shoots off, back away. You move quickly back. Sand rushes out of the jar with tremendous force, force whipping around the cavern and tripping you to the ground. Scramble back. You scramble backwards across the floor, and sand forms into a whirlpool-like shape. Two deep black vortices appear at the side and roam queasily across the surface until they reach the top as they swivel widen and seem to focus on you look about for something to use attack or cast out yep, can't cast a spell down there you deftly leap forward swing your sword but it passes clean through the monster it barely even notices <laughs> run i guess you turn tail and run for it but the monster is hot on your heels a tendril of whirling sand keeps snaps forward and you feel tiny cups rake your back I can take that damage. You stumble sideways, bashing your shoulder into a pillar, and the ancient wood creaks violently. But the creature is still hot on your heels. It's too fast to outrun. Nah, we're, we're fine. Just keep running. I, I can I can get out. <clears throat> you turn away from the thing and start running as fast as you can. Two paces forward, you slam into another pillar in the dark. Rocks begin to fall inwards, and the whole ceiling shakes. You hear a deep rumbling. The tunnel is collapsing. You dodge rocks aside and crash down upon you. Yes, sure. The creature is close behind, but then the ceiling caves in at your heels, burying it. In your haste, you trip on a broken cart and the glowing horn goes flying. It lands nearby, but the tunnel is still rumbling. Grab it! I need it! You leap towards the horn, landing on your knees. You reach out, but not before a massive rock slams on it, grinding the horn into a fine powder. Ooh. Ooh. Nope. Uh, nope. Nope. I gotta try to get that horn. Hmm. Get a closer look. Yep. Look around. Get, get that. Get that sand. Yeah. Now move the jars. Move those jars. <clears throat> <laughs> you pick up one of the clay jars to move it aside, giving you more room to work with the rubble surrounding the horn, but in the darkness you trip over a pickaxe and the jar tumbles out of your hand, shattering on the ground. 
in the blue-green light, you see sand spilling out, and it begins to swirl upwards. Yeah, get some sand. Yeah, magic sand, dude. You grab a handful of the sand, but it seems to be trying to grab you. The rushing torrent is so strong now that it knocks you to the floor. Get up. <laughs> you scramble to your feet, and it forms a something or other. Look around for something to use. Uh, discard a pickaxe. Threaten it with the pickaxe. Just run. No, <laughs> threaten it with the pickaxe and hold it threateningly, but the whirlpool sucks you in. The axe swirls around inside with violent speed before being smashed to pieces and spraying in all directions. Charge the creature. Get in the sand. All right. Nah. Uh, wondering uh, what else I can do here, like what I could possibly... Get a closer look. I mean, I could pray. I could pray. Let's see if I can pray, because I did pray recently at the uh, thing. Pray for protection. Nothing happens. Have you been forgotten in the dark? Oof. Man, if I fuck, if I went for the god of... Uh, if, I, if I went for Korga, Korga wouldn't be leaving me alone here. Korga wouldn't be uh, making me hang around in the dark alone. Shit. Around. Get some sand from the ground. Yep. Closer look at the bottom. Yep. Shift the rocks. Only gentle, but in here it's blinding. Get it out. <clears throat> Firmly stuck. Yank it. And uh, now can I, like, immediately... Leave? Leave immediately. Don't even look at it. Scramble back. All right. About for something to use. Discarded pickaxe. Just run. Let's see. Vortex passes the discarded pickaxe, gathers it up until the handle and head are swinging around at violent speed, being smashed to pieces. It's very close, cornering you against a pick pillar. Looking around wildly in the dark, you can't think of anything. As a few step backs, so you feel hard stone. Yes, is this how it ends? Oh, hang on. You cover your head, expecting a fatal blow, but before the creature can strike, the tunnel rumbles and a holy vengeance. Rocks crash around from the ceiling, burying it. You've been saved by the gorilla, but the rumble's still there. A few more boulders crash, narrowly missing you. The tunnel is collapsing, and you with it. You dodge aside. A uh, creature's close behind. No, it isn't. Get the horn. No. I want the horn. Man... Man, maybe I gotta like go back to uh, back out there, figure out some way to uh, get in here with a torch, even though I don't have one. I'll see about it. I gotta get going anyway. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.